is Tani Pearson interviewing J.D. Sampson in Brooklyn, New York for the Women of Rock Oral History Project for the Sophia Smith Collection at Smith College on January 6, 2015. First interview of the new year. Yay! So exciting. Um, so we just talked a little bit about what the whole thing's about. J.D. Sampson, this is your life. Um, yes. <laughs> well, sometimes people get a little weirded out by like starting out at the beginning, beginning, but if you wouldn't mind, um, yeah, talking a little bit about where you grew up, your parents were artists, yeah. siblings that you had, like little JD. Yeah, little JD. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was born in Cleveland and my parents were kind of like hippies. They were both artists. My mom was a silversmith and my dad was a wood sculptor and they met at the Cranbrook Academy of Art where my dad taught my mom in a wood sculpting class. But then, I guess when my sister was born, she was three years older than me. They had lived in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Oh, okay. On a farm. And my mom, like, worked at a retail store in town or something. And I don't even know. My dad worked at, like, a home for boy, troubled boys yeah. or something. Anyways, but then when they had my sister, they kind of, like, freaked out and moved back to Cleveland, which is where my mom grew up okay. so that my dad could work with my grandfather at his sand and gravel mine and they kind of like both got out of making art pretty soon after their children were born um and then we lived on the east side we lived in a town called Newbury for a while and then we moved to a place called Pepper Pike which is yeah, now, funny. yeah, <laughs> which is now like really kind of fancy. But when we lived there, we had this like country house on a bunch of land. Mm -hmm. But now like all these houses have like encroached on it. It's really yeah. sad. Um, yeah, and then I was really into art. I would like stay up all night and draw and, until my mom forced me to go to sleep. And I was really into visual art and like already making political art, like when I was in high school. Was into punk and some like, mostly like queer core stuff. Not so much rat girl, but some rat girl. I didn't really know that much cause I was like stuck in Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Is yeah. Is this like before high school? I yeah, mean, and like getting into like high school. Like middle school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so I mean, how did you even become aware of all of that? And oh no! Or punk rock that was or... high school. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. But you were into art. Yeah. At a very young age. Yeah. Okay. And I came out when I was like 15, and then that was pretty much when I started like going to shows because I was like seeking a new community outside of like my small school. Yeah. Where there was like only a couple queer kids and stuff. Yeah. Um, and yet, yeah, I knew I read in your history on the yeah. Tigger page that you came out when you were 15, and mm -hmm. I think you've mentioned that in a lot of interviews. Mm -hmm. um, but how long before that did you know? You're actually the only. Um, I'm not. Do you identify as lesbian or queer? I'm not. Sure. Both. Both. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just never want to. I'm super any. easy going. Okay. Uh, um, labels. Yeah, because I just say gay. I'm like, just yeah, gay. yeah. I don't know. It's just <laughs> yeah. easier. Um, but yeah, you're the only woman that I'm interviewing so far who is not heterosexual so Whoa. um yeah which is kind of strange but i'm sure there'll be more after but yeah how long did you know um like before you came out i guess i was in like i remember being like 12 and somebody calling me a dyke and i remember thinking to myself like getting like really defensive and yeah. feeling like i can't i can't believe this like and i remember the feeling was like was like I am, and that's why I feel so defensive, like, this weird feeling, but I was, um, and then I would say, like, right after that, there was, like, a long period of time where I didn't, like, date any boys, mm -hmm. whereas, like, before that, I feel like I was, like, really into, like, kissing boys or something, oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. totally, like, I, but it was really interesting, I think, in my school, there was, like, it was a popularity thing you know mm -hmm. or something and so it was like you were cool if you had kissed someone or something oh, it's like so if you weird kissed boys, you were cool. yeah i mean i don't know <laughs> it's like it's hard to think back at like what my motivation was or something but it was definitely to like try and fit in you know yeah and then 
yeah, so there was a while where I guess I didn't really consider myself anything, and then I felt like I started to identify as, like, bisexual, and then, um, yeah, eventually started, like, falling in love and dating women. Mm-hmm. So. And that mm-hmm. was, um, so when you were 15, yeah. you came out, and I, uh, I did read in, I think it, this was in your history, too, that your, uh, your parents were, I don't know if it was upset or not supportive, but you had an awesome gay aunt. Yeah. And really supportive grandparents. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just wondering. Yeah, I mean, my parents were both, like, shocked and, like, depressed and upset about it, but, um, and it kind of, like, I always talk about, like, my biggest bully was myself, because I feel like I was, like, really um, acting out at the same time, like, kind of, like, not obeying my parents or Mm -hmm. something, and, like, kind of, like, being, like, whatever. Yeah. (laughs) I can do whatever I want. And um, that kind of started, like, when I got my license, my driver's license, and um, hung out, like, just, like, with the punk rockers in town who weren't necessarily from my school and like kind of went to this place called Coventry Mm -hmm. which was like where all the like people on the fringe hung out and we all would like sit at this coffee shop till like 10 30 every night and like whatever so yeah I mean I feel like I was like acting out and my parents were also angry about that so it's hard for me to say now whether or not they were just like angry about me coming out or homophobic or if it was just like a basic like teenage angst situation but um yeah my aunt is a lesbian and is awesome and so she was very helpful to me and then my grandparents were just like I was always really close to them so it was like an unconditional love kind of a situation from them which was great but I will also say that like when all is said and done I look back and I feel super lucky that my town was so uh supportive of me and like liberal being that I'm from Ohio it seems like that would be difficult yeah yeah okay yeah because I'm like how does she how did you find people? I mean, yeah. you know, I grew up in a suburb. Yeah. And we had gay straight lines, but it was, like, two girls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, there, were, there wasn't really... Well, I started the alliance at my school, so it wasn't there when I was. But then I guess I hung out in Coventry, and then I went to the uh, center, which was, like, downtown. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of weird because it was, like, clearly, like, totally different kinds of people than me or my friends yeah. from my school. But, um, yeah, like, again, like, I think I was, like, hated all my friends when I came out because I thought they were going to be homophobic and they were super awesome. So, you know. And you I said you like, still got um, bullied or by the straight kids at school? I read something about bullying. Was it not that sorry. intense or... Oh yeah, it was not um it was not super intense. It was oh, like okay. I feel like sometimes people would say stuff but it was like there were people there to back me up or whatever. Like yes, there was like a couple times I can remember but they did, it's like they didn't it didn't affect me. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Lucky. I feel super <laughs> lucky. And I think like, you know, I I I feel like I it's interesting to, to look back on it that way because I yeah. think in the moment I was like everyone hates me yeah. and this sucks. Well, just being but a teenager, yeah, you know, I mean everything is totally magnified and yeah. it's so much worse. <laughs> I, know, I know. I don't know why I just looked at you. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, uh, <laughs> Are you a teenager? No. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. Aww. Um, Twelve. I'm sorry. And uh, so you're. You were really involved in art, mm-hmm. and you kind of, it sounds like you kind of started your, like, activist work in high school, too. Yeah. By starting, was it Gay Straight Alliance, or I don't remember what yeah. it was called back then. Yeah, I think it was called the Gay Straight yeah. Alliance, and then I also was, like, the president of the Envi- Environmental Club, oh, and yeah. so I was, it was very important to me to be, like, part of that dynamic in my community, for sure, and mm-hmm. then also kind of, like, I think I was part of student government and like 
also did that in college as well. So it's like always in field hockey. Yes. Athletic. Yes. Did you do well in school? Yes. Wow. All right. Like I was like gold star. I was I have I was weird in school though. I was like really good at math and science and I mean whatever. I was in a lot of AP classes, but yeah. then and like had high honors or whatever, but I didn't do very well in English. Oh, okay. And like history or something like that. That's where that always surprises me. Yeah. And I get kind of jealous musicians who are good at math and science. Yeah. Do you read music? No. I mean, well, I kind of do. I'm not. Yeah. I learned when I was in high school. All right. But I don't. I've never used it until this day. No. <laughs> um, did you always plan on going to college, or were you just expected to go to college? Expected to go to college. Um, did you want to go? Yes. Okay. I wanted to get out of my town. Yeah, sure. but you said that your father cut out a Jennifer mm-hmm. Reeves article on feminist experimental film. Yeah. So, like, was that... And then you ended up majoring in that. Yeah. At Sarah Lawrence. Yeah. Um, so was it, like, because of her, or were you already kind of interested I, in film? A well, bit? my aunt was a filmmaker, and we had this thing at my school called Senior Project, mm-hmm. which was, like you're supposed to go into the workforce, into, like, whatever you're interested in doing for a month. I think it was, like, because maybe my school didn't have that many people going to college. Like, you were kind of, like, it was, like, and a moment where people could see, like, do I want to be a teacher? And they'd go, like, sit in with someone being a teacher for a month, and then they would decide yes or no or, like, whatever, which was actually a really cool thing. And I went to L.A. and lived with my lesbian aunt. Oh, the cool gay aunt. Yeah, <laughs> and worked, like, on film sets. Oh, not bad. It was really awesome. Um, but it was super commercial, like, I mean, whatever, I worked on, like, in every different kind of, like, aspect of filmmaking, so it was, like, costumes one day, and then, like, set design the next day, and whatever, and I definitely found things I liked better than others, but it was, yeah. like, but what I ended up going to school for was, like, something totally different. Oh, okay. Which was experimental film, which is basically like you do everything. Yeah. Mm. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so you said when you got to Sarah Lawrence, you're yeah. in New York, and that's when you start, you were finally old enough because you were young when you went to college. Yeah. You weren't 18 yet? I turned 18 like the week I went, I guess. And then you got to go to shows and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, um, so you. Do you consider yourself more of, like, a visual artist than a musician, or now just kind of both, but visual arts and film, Yeah, that was, like, your first interest? Yeah, I mean, I would I would definitely say that, like, and so then my, my four-year, like, career within film school was really, like, I ended up kind of working on this idea of, like, um, adaptation, so, like, my thesis for film actually was drawings. So I guess I've always kind of been interested in this boundaryless, like, medium of, like, using the theory of of X, we can make Y or something Mm -hmm. like that. So uh, I would say, like, I guess I consider myself, like, a multimedia artist. Um, But, yeah, my true, like, deep love was always, like, visual art Mm -hmm. um and i think that's really how i got into music and um but now i think i'm seen as a musician because of my like success in the (laughs) industry we'll get to that (laughs) in the industry so yeah (laughs) totally so it's like a little bit weird i would say like now i barely ever make visual art but i think that's like my true passion Um, Can you talk a little bit just about your, because I don't really want to skip over anything, you know, just your college experience. It was really interesting because I went to the most expensive school in the country, and I thought that financial aid was like, I didn't understand that I had to pay it back. I thought it was like a scholarship or something. Oh, you did? No, so (laughs) now looking back on it, I'm like, was that worth it? Like, yeah. whoa. But um, 
it was a great school and um i work i was part of student government i worked in admissions i managed the coffee shop um and i did all this as work study like i basically had to so i had like five jobs and i also had an internship in the city okay. and um in that sense, it was really great for me because I feel like uh, being part of the community there was like really important to what I do now. Yeah. And um, collaboration and kind of thinking critically, these are all like new, new ideas for me coming from like textbook learning in mm -hmm. high school in Ohio. So that was good. But I was also like, placed in a setting with a lot of people who grew up really wealthy which was like interesting for me intellectually and also uh in terms of class like i felt like i was like trying to keep up with everyone mm -hmm. intellectually and like oh, financially well. <laughs> yeah because i feel like you know like i never understood that you could read a text and think and not agree with it you know what i mean yes so that was like a really new idea for me but yeah um at that coffee shop you worked at yeah you put on punk shows yeah you were really into punk music yeah i mean i think i was really into the community of it and yeah. uh yeah so i i bit that's when i i started like putting on shows for like the haggard and like race errata and like all these bands oh, and stuff. I love that band. yeah I love they have that a new track out today actually oh really it's on spin.com weird yeah yeah, they're making a new record. Uh, but yeah, like, so all these bands from the 90s. Were you ever in bands? Like, do you play an instrument? or? Um, I When I was in high instrument? school, I took an acoustic guitar. I took acoustic guitar lessons for, like, I don't know, maybe I went to, like, 10 lessons. Yeah. And um, I liked it. But I didn't keep doing it. I mean, like, I still play it every once in a while. And that's when I can read music. I can read oh, only okay. for, like, guitar. I mean, I could figure it out, but it's yeah. like, you know. No, I can't. I, mean, I just like to know. I'm like, but <laughs> it's mostly classical guitar that I played. Like, not even, oh. like, strum, Strumsville. So yeah. that's really interesting to me. Because it's so the opposite of what yeah. I make. So but, <laughs> So was Latigre your first band? Yeah. <laughs> That's so annoying. I know. <laughs> like, I know. Well, well I mean... And I don't want to skip over um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sadie Benning, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, how did you meet her? Because she's the reason you got hooked up with Joanna and Kathleen Hanna, right? Yeah. Okay. So, the summer of 2000... No, 1999. It was my junior to senior year summer. Mm -hmm. And I lived in Chicago for the summer and taught uh, the history of graffiti to kids in the Robert Taylor Homes, which is like a projects, yeah. the projects, whatever. They've since been torn down, actually. But um, it was really interesting, awesome summer for me. And I uh, met Sadie then because we had a bunch of friends in common, okay. just from like the feminist art world in New York. Um, cause I had been like networking here basically like in, or just basically like working within a community of like feminist artists, like mm -hmm. mostly filmmakers, but that kind of like, kind of like moved into other mediums and stuff, yeah. just like how it is in the art world. So, um, and actually Kate Hardy, who I don't know if you know, like was a big kind of like player in the experimental film world and then also just like went to punk shows and everything so she i think introduced me to uh johanna and sadie and kathleen it's, i don't remember if that was before this summer or not but anyway <laughs> i was in chicago and sadie lived there too and we hung out like a bunch and listened to records and like acted crazy and yeah. were kids I mean, whatever. And then uh, sh when La Tigre finished their first record, they called me. It was like in the fall of 99, and they were like, 
do you want to come on tour with us and be our projectionist? You said no. <laughs> I actually said, can I call you right back? And oh, then, really? Yeah, and then I like hung up the phone and I was like, and then I called them back immediately. And, like I remember it being like totally awkward. And then uh, I was like, okay. But so what it meant was that I had to take off like my last semester or not my last semester, but like three or four weeks of my last semester of yeah. school. And um, so I had to do all my classes independent study. Oh, okay. And my teachers all said yes. So I did that. Liberal arts. I know. Okay, and exactly. I think all my teachers were like feminists at yeah. that point. It was, so it was like really lucky. Yeah. But I had to do a lot of work on the road. And uh, I think like in the first week of me taking off, Kathleen was like, do you want to be in the band? And I was like, okay. <laughs> be in the band as the no, like, like, projectionist or be in the band as? Like f from that point forward. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so, and I put this in the interview guide, but I have to yeah, yeah. ask, um, because I don't know, I feel like other people are just better at, like, acting cool than yeah. me, but even, just, she emailed me about this interview, Who? um, Kath Kathleen. About even, this interview? Oh, oh no, okay, about, I was like, I that's weird. Wanted, <laughs> you know, I want her to be a part of it, too, <laughs> yeah, for, like, health reasons she yeah. didn't at that time, yeah, so yeah. I'll email her back some Yeah, you but yeah, I like almost threw up, like just getting in, I'm just not cool like that. Like all of you, I get very, very nervous. So yeah. what was, I mean, did you, like, did you know, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure you knew who Kathleen Hanna was, like Bikini mm -hmm. Kill and all that. So you're like, oh my God, I'm in a band with Kathleen Hanna. Or does she, is she just like, I mean, she seems like a pretty down to earth, nice person. So it didn't really come up. I just maybe I'm just a real loser. No, like, oh it's really <laughs> weird. It's like <laughs> I don't. I, I'm actually. I'm like thinking deeply, trying yeah, to be like, what is it? Ago. No, no. I know. Okay, so n I never felt like that. Never. No. But I don't know. I right now, what the process I'm going through is like. <laughs> I don't know why I never felt like that, but I guess I have something about fame that just feels like I don't really care. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're lucky. Well, <laughs> it's good and bad, which we'll get to. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, just in terms of, like, my own career. But, yeah. uh, yeah, like, I remember the first time I met her, it was, like, a Halloween part, or maybe it wasn't Halloween, but it was, like, in Dumbo at this warehouse. Our friend Ram Dasha was DJing, and I met her in, in the elevator, I think. And I remember, look, like, watch like being really interested in her as like a, a, a person like yeah. as a human and being like kind of like already seeing how difficult it was for her to be famous yeah or something and um but yeah i never i think there was times when we were like rehearsing for like their first show mm -hmm. and like it's just so weird to me that i was part of all of that you know what yeah. I mean like in the room and stuff and and like while they're like discussing the things and stuff because at the time I I wasn't in the band so I and I was just like their visual person yeah I didn't know where to yeah, yeah. visual yeah projectionist I think yeah said somewhere yeah and um so like at the time I, I remember feeling like I can't believe I'm here for their first thing like this yeah. is so, you know, and I, I just feel like I tried really hard to be, like, both, like, humble and kind of invisible as, mm -hmm. like, c to, like, let them have their process or whatever. And so I would say, like, if anything, that first year was really complicated because I feel like I was, like, kind of um, transitioning from that to, like, being yeah. someone with a voice in the project. So it was, like confusing for me to understand like when to talk and when to not and like when to be like yes whatever you say and when to be like no my opinion counts too or something yeah. you know so that all that kind of stuff about collaboration but yeah no I, I was never really like starstruck you know but I don't think I I, I'm, I never am oh so yeah I, 
I'm just always wondering. I think I'm just a loser. So, no. But I like to, no. I like to know it, how everyone... I don't know why it, it is. It might have something just to do with, like, general yeah. justice and freedom of, like, everyone is the same or yeah. some deep shit. <laughs> um, well, I guess you kind of... That's a little bit about your relationship with... Yeah. Um, I mean, you all ended you up can, seeming like friends, like, see yeah. I saw uh, Sadie. The band and then yeah, yeah. Then you were kind of in the front and uh-huh. performing with them as well. Yeah. Was that kind of like a gradual? Well, basically, um, that summer of 2000, I did a gig with them at the Wexner Center. That was just Joe and Kathleen, and then they were like begged me to like come out on stage for it, and I okay. did. And that was the first time I was, like, on stage. And then, like, Sadie couldn't make it for that performance. Mm -hmm. And then, like, recently, like, soon after that, she was kind of like, I I am going to continue my visual art stuff. And so then I, it it always seems like I, uh, like, took her place, but that's not really what happened, you know what I mean? It was kind yeah. of, like, more of, like, a thing that's just, like, life happens. Um, yeah, I mean, I was bummed that she didn't continue, but it was, like, it's just how life goes, you know? How did you like performing? Um, it, I... <laughs> I mean... It was like... You must like it a little bit, because yeah. you didn't hate it. You well, I, it. I liked it, but I had major panic attacks. Oh, you did? Um, like, the first show was in Cleveland. Yeah. At, like, oh. the place where I hung out when I was a kid called the Grog Shop. Mm-hmm. Like, where I saw, like, Pansy Division, like, yeah. when I was in high school. And, like, my whole family was there, inclu- including my oh, grandparents. My and that was, like, fine. And then... The next day, we played in, like, St. Louis, and I, like, was, like, I'm going to faint, and I had to, like, leave the stage. And so for the next, like, five shows, I was, like, it was kind of, like, I don't know if I can do this, because it was really terrible. And then I just had to, like, deal with it, and I did, and it started getting better and better, and then I wasn't nervous anymore. But I think I developed this, like, persona that was, like, super... I would never think you had stage fright. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. I just, like, developed a stage persona that was, like, really... I actually, like, the way I got through the stage fright was, like, I, I remember we were, like, in... Idaho and I was like in a bathroom stall and I was just like what am I gonna do what am I gonna do and I remember thinking like you are the coolest person in the world yeah Yeah, and I was like you are the coolest person in the world and I like I was like I'm gonna do this and I like went out there you're supposed to just stand just like spread your body out really spread your legs spread your (gasps) your arms sounds good take up a lot of space basically I did that (laughs) with my brain and I like I remember just like walking out there and and, like, having a good show. And that was, like, the first night where I was, like, okay, like... And, basically, I feel like that was what... I, I started to, like, have this ego on stage or something. Yeah. Which is, like, not my personality <laughs> in real life. So, I mean, I think that that's what happened. I, I simultaneously, like, built this persona of which became, like, a very popular persona for mm-hmm. people to... Get behind. Okay. <laughs> I was just waiting for the last word. I'm like, I don't know what she's yeah, I don't know what it, but I mean, but I kind of just had to like go with it, and yeah. so yeah. Um. So can you talk a little about? Okay, I just think it's crazy that Latigra was your first band. So, mm-hmm. um, yes, yeah, so you went from being visual artist to your on stage playing in a band mm-hmm. with Kathleen, Hannah, and Joanna. Um touring mm-hmm. just what well, I mean maybe this is when you can kind of talk about include some of that I, I don't remember which article it was um, I should really start citing my sources oh, no. but <laughs> you're described as a gender outlaw uh-huh. um, and then I you know I've seen the La Tigre, I think it was kind of documentary or like a tour diary yeah um, 
And just, what was it like, what was your experience as a woman in a touring mm -hmm. band? Um, there was that one festival that you played in the documentary with like Slipknot, and I'm just like, oh, are all those other bands like male rock bands? It's so weird. And then it was just, and then La Tigre is there, mm -hmm. which is like totally counteracts all of the other music. So, and it doesn't have to be horror stories or just any. Yeah. I mean, it's really interesting because I had like this twofold experience where I was like a woman, but I was also just like some weird gender outlaw person. And mm -hmm. um, to be honest with you, it's hard for me to speak about being a woman in music because I feel like that's not what I come up against. Yeah. I come up against being like a gender queer mm -hmm. in the music industry okay. and a female one at that yeah. so um i feel like the experience that johanna and kathleen and myself had as a band was like the woman ex woman woman in music experience yeah. now so i would say like as a band i think that we struggled like to be taken seriously like on stage at venues mm -hmm. um at music stores, um, yes. at festivals, like, uh, but for the most part, we s surrounded ourselves with other women and people in the industry that respected us. Um, and I think that that was something that was like a tool that I really learned a lot. Uh, well, I learned that from the experience of working with Kathleen and Johanna, like, I mean, I feel like a lot of my feminism comes from, like, them and working with them. And, like, I, I like, am so grateful and lucky to have had them as my teachers, you know. Because mm -hmm. um, when I started the band, I was 21. I know. I didn't so, think I realized you were that yeah. young until I was yeah. back. Like, well, now I'm not that young. No, no. <laughs> but now uh, we're in our 30s. Yeah, now I'm 36. You're 36? Yeah. You're still the youngest person I've interviewed so far. You're technically not old enough. Oh, really? Yeah. I try to go for, like, over 40. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll have I like that. Interview. Thank you. <laughs> no, no. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, my experience of, like, the business part yeah. of it is, like, I feel like Kathleen was, like, this is what we're going to do. And I was, like, totally. Um, and that meant, like, if somebody treated us like shit, they were gone. If the monitor guy was making jokes about masturbating on the bus he was gone if like um you know and it was like not harsh it was just like mm -hmm. that's what you do and I felt like that was really an awesome kind of like learning experience um at the time I think like we had a lot against us in terms of like making it on as a pop band or something mm -hmm. um and I think it was just, like, part of it was being women, but part of it was being activists and uh, making songs about butch lesbian visibility. Yeah, and no, like, like, you know. It was probably mostly yeah. the message. I mean, yeah, and I think on our record that we released on Universal, like, we definitely tried to, like, have some songs that were a little bit, like, more suitable for the general public or something like that. Oh. Okay. Um, but... You know, when it came down to it, they were just as political as everything else, yeah. you know? So, because if we weren't talking about, like, um, police brutality, then we were talking about, like, the major label, like, getting blowjobs by oh, really? by other musicians or something. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, I feel like it was like, well, you know, <laughs> we're still yeah. being super political. So. Universal while you're on Universal? Yeah, totally. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, definitely, like, it, it was, for me, it was, it was more like, who's, are you a boy or a girl, you know? Yeah. Um, I thought, yeah, the, well, I guess it was funny, but it was also kind of sad. The story in that documentary where yeah. there was a fan who was, like, hitting on you and mm -hmm. you were in a car together, mm -hmm. and then you realized that she was making fun of, like, some mm -hmm. lesbians or something on the mm -hmm. street, and you were like, oh, she thinks I'm 
a guy. Yeah, yeah. And she's just like a homophobic straight girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that wants to. So yeah, things like that. I right? forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Cool. I mean that, that stuff like that happened all the time, and I think like. Um, it's it was interesting like i think in a lot of ways i was like in the right place at the right time for being like some sort of like a trailblazer for like mm-hmm. you know really like trans the trans like revolution yeah. you know and i think that was really awesome and i feel like i felt super happy to be like a mascot for that in mm-hmm. a way like i feel like i was like i really like gave myself to my body is like this act for this activist purpose or something and so it was like i felt really great about it i got a lot of shit a lot of people said i was ugly a lot of people were freaked out about the way i looked you know but it was like i had joe and kathleen like totally like lifting me up the whole way so it was super easy really and um and i feel like i helped people think differently which is good yeah, I think you did. You yeah. still do. Yeah. Um, did you? And so this is me. My this is me. This is my resentment coming out that like none of you are millionaires. Like that yeah. everyone I'm interviewing still works really hard and like yeah. doesn't have. So La Tigra, I think of being a very big. I remember when I saw I saw well I saw you a few times, mm-hmm. but I remember I went to see you. Hey, dirty. At. Avalon and Mary opened for you uh-huh. and this was like early 2000s oh. mm-hmm. maybe and that's a big place and it was weird to see that's a bad shot <laughs> yeah I know just maybe not the butthole <laughs> why you gotta do that just lay down um but yeah like did you learn a lot about the music business while you're in La Tigre from being on a major label did you make were you able to support yourself while you were in La Tigra, like, were you bathing in bathtubs filled with hundred dollar bills, or? <laughs> it's funny, well, both of those things, like, I'll answer them separately, but okay. the first one was, like, did I learn about the business? Yeah. Yes, in fact, Kathleen, I saw Kathleen, like, two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and we were at her house, and I, we were talking about how, like, sometimes we find that now people don't want to like manage us or work with us because we know too much like where we micromanage people we're like um excuse me like it says here in this contract blah 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 you know what i mean because really what i learned from the experience of being in the band was like don't trust anybody else because the reality is it's like everybody nobody really does their job very well and if you want everyone to do their job you have to totally micromanage them and watch everything that they're doing and I would say that like that is a huge part about being a feminist artist that I would say is like important to keep track of Mm -hmm. um and like Johanna is so business minded she's like so incredibly amazing at like accounting and dealing with all that stuff and I think like I learned about the I learned the right way to do that you know Kathleen like booked our shows for a while it's like in I did all the tour managing like for almost the whole time we were a band um I learned everything there was to know about like basically starting from square one and learning about a concept and then becoming a master at it you know it's like I think you know we were punk aesthetically um in terms of just like self teaching. We taught ourselves everything. Sorry, it was just no. her. Yeah, her face. She's blocking your face. <laughs> dirty. Come here. It's okay, dirty. We can move her. Should I move her? No, maybe she'll just lay down again. Yeah. I feel bad. Um, it's fine. Sh- uh, yeah, but it was just like everything was about the project was self taught. You know, it would be like, we want to do video instead of slides. Okay, I'm going to figure out how to get a scrim what size do we need do the research of finding all the venues we're playing and we know what scrims are like not flammable and which what projector and how well how long is the cable and how are we going to put it up and like all that stuff is just like it's kind of just like learning how to be a good 
hard worker, you yeah. know? And I think the work ethic between the three of us was just like so extreme and it worked so well for us, really. You know, yeah, like. You guys weren't hiring people to do all those things for you. No, and like the show. people that did stuff for us, we told them like exactly how to do it. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just like, we didn't really trust anyone else. We, you know, we just wanted to do it all ourselves. So mm -hmm. we did. Um, and then the second part was, was I bathing in bathtubs, yeah. which is something that I talked about in therapy today. Yeah. Um, when I was making the most amount of money that I was from La Tigre, all of my friends were like broke and had no jobs and like living on top of each other in Brooklyn, you know? Wow. And I, I feel like it's interesting now to look back on that and be like, whoa, now all those people are like, their trajectory was like really steady. Yeah. But for me, it was just like, and now I'm like, where am I? Oh. But, uh, <laughs> but in terms of money at the time, we were super like conservative. Mm -hmm. So I lived in an apartment like really close to here with two other people that was like half the size of this apartment the whole time I was in La Tigre and I think I paid like $500 rent and we gave each other, we gave ourselves a monthly stipend that was like less than $2,000. Oh, all right. So that was it. That's crazy. Yeah, because I just think of, and I know it's not We would me. get like bonuses at the end of tour and stuff, but we were super generous with people and we were yeah. super conservative about, about, about our money. So we had like a bank account, you know, at the end of the band that had a bunch of money in it you know yeah. and we ended up like making that documentary and like but yeah I mean honestly like I feel like I've lived well I've had everything I've needed you know and like that's all I can ask for for the rest of my yeah. life like I guess it would be awesome to not be stressed out but yeah I never made like a ton of money no baths to no. no. Who's on? Is it Ben Franklin? I don't even know. Okay. Benjamin's. That's a hundred dollars. Yeah, Benjamin. Okay. Who's <laughs> on the hundred dollar Um. Okay. I don't want to get too depressing, but it sounds no, like no. you guys were friends. Get depressing. The whole time, like you were always friends. Was it because in Kathleen Tigre? got sick? Um, the breakup. Like I've seen the yeah, yeah, yeah. too, so I think that. Was, oh yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that was it. You guys weren't sure. You and Johanna weren't sure what was going on at first, but Latifah just kind of, like, sounded like just dissolved a little bit. I mean, you... No, I mean, there was, like, basically, like, Kathleen was getting sick a lot, mm -hmm. and we were kind of, like, is she depressed? Is she not taking care of herself? Like, it does she not want to be doing this? So she's just saying she's sick. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? It was, like, and clearly now we all know yeah. why that was happening, but... At the time, we were just kind of, like, unsure and kind of, like, trying to be supportive. And mm -hmm. it's funny, when I was looking at your, like, list of what you wanted to talk about, I saw this, like, bullet point, and I was like, I feel so proud of the way that it ended between us. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like there was such an opportunity for me and Joe to be like, we can't believe you want to stop the band we're like doing so well and blah 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 and like yeah. what are we gonna do with our lives but it was like that did not happen we were so supportive basically we went to lunch and kathleen was like i don't want to do this anymore i'm unhappy and we were like the last thing we want you yeah. to do is do something you don't want to do for us and it was like so easy yeah you know what i mean and so i feel so many like positive feelings about that and i think that's why like all of us are still friends now yeah, yeah. i know it seems like that's probably one of the best grant band breakups i've ever i know and the other like, thing is that anything. we didn't want to put it in the press so we yeah. never did and it just kind of like people's interests like kind of like turned to other things and like it and we never had a breakup announcement so Reunion totally. tour, 2016. Yeah. Um, were you, were you worried at all about what you were going to do? I mean, were you, because it does sound like it was a little bit sudden, so was there any part of you that was like, oh shit, now what do I do? 
I feel like I was in a weird place, like, personally. I was kind of like... I mean, I feel... I was, like, in my 20s. Yeah. In Brooklyn, being crazy. And, um... I remember this one night, like, I was really good friends with Peaches. And I remember, yeah. like, I called her and I was like, so we're breaking up? I remember she was like... And it must have been, like, the next day. And she was like... Be in my band. And I was like, okay. That was one of my and questions. <laughs> honestly, it was kids. like that easy. Yeah. I mean, I feel lucky for that as yeah. well. I mean, I feel like I've had a lot of great luck um, in the industry. You know, it's like I'm not a trained musician and I'm like playing keys for Peaches on a <laughs> year long world tour. Oh, so it was that long? It was. Oh, an entire year. It was like from like wow. April to April. And I did the music direction for it too, which okay. I completely did not know how to do but taught myself. Um which means that like she wanted to make a live band out of all of the samples from her electronic stuff. Oh. So I had to sample like everything and then set it up so that people could play it on like each individual instrument. Wow. Yeah. That sounds really complicated. It was really <laughs> hard. And I also had to learn how to play songs when I don't really know how to play music. <laughs> so, I mean, no, I just like listening to a song and then playing it, like, yeah. what? But I did that, and I felt like I did a pretty good job. Are you a workaholic? Yeah. Okay. Because when I was looking at the timeline of events, I'm like, oh, she must have had some time off. And I'm like, no. Why would like you? You, did, you like, can't have time off. Tour. No, I'm the same no, way. Yeah. But, and then because Men was pretty soon after you got off tour with Peaches, then yeah. Or were you like doing? Were you working that all out while you were? <laughs> I'm like I don't even doing. remember. I guess I'm just, trying to think of like, like where, what years. apartment I was in. Yeah. That's like what. Um, I guess it was really soon after, and I like. Um, Johanna and I just like there was like a couple songs she had written when I was on tour with Peaches and she was like let's start this band and then I wrote a song and we worked on those and then it kind of became a more of a DJ thing because we started getting gigs like that okay. and um Initially, Men was the title of our DJ duo, and then we had these songs that were written, so. I had been DJing, like, the whole time. Yeah. On and off, like, La Tigra and Peaches, so it was, you like. You still DJ, don't you? Yeah, that's, like, my main job now. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And what I mean, in terms of money making. Yeah. yeah. That's your job job. Yeah. And then Men is, like, your... Fun. Men is over. I thought you just released something. In the last October, yeah. Yeah, but that's not that long. Oh, long. no, like 2013. Yeah. Oh, it's 2015. Yeah. Wait, did you officially break up? Did I miss it? No, we didn't say anything. Okay, so it's not really my fault. <laughs> no. So that's just Actually, I did an interview last week, and I it was the first time I said something. But now I'm just like starting Second to talk time. about it. Second time. Second, two times. I got it. No, no. Our uh, oh, so that's it. Yeah. Oh my god, wait. We can't talk about that yet. Why? Oh, because, we're not there yet? No, no, not yet. Oh, okay. Okay, so during... I have my post Latigra, so men... Can I open the window? Oh, yeah, sure. One second. Do you want to take a break for a minute? No. Do you need I water guess, or anything? It just okay. like, it feels like it got really hot. Yeah. yeah. I'm always hot. It's because we're talking about such intense... Yeah, totally. ...stuff. No. <laughs> It probably, my house gets really hot and it takes a really long time to cool yeah. down, so it, whoop. It won't you okay? Down. No, I hit. <laughs> is it? Okay, go um, for it. Yeah, so, well, I just wanted to talk about New England Roses. Yeah. And Dykes oh. Candy which I, I can't pretend that I knew about that because I didn't, like, yeah. I didn't know that you had done that. And it was, uh, you would, uh, I can't think of the word. It was Not like a flash mob, but you would yeah, do kind of. Just start it was like flash mob before flash mobs happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you were doing all of that before men or during men or. Dykes can dance was like during La Tigre. Oh, it was. Yeah, okay. it was like really early. In fact, it might have been like. 
It was like right when I started this year. Yeah. It was like forever ago. Um, New England Roses was in between La Tigra and Peaches. <laughs> in between yeah like there was like Tigre. three months in between or something okay oh wow and then that was, i mean that was it that was just like yeah it was like they're, they're like my best friends yeah. and we just wanted to like make something and we did but we have talked about doing something else yeah um just because we're st- still best friends and uh right. we had such a good time oh. doing it and i think like as i get older i think more about going back to those moments when you yeah. make something that's like for fun yeah yeah wait so i do have a question about the men break up because yeah. are you touring at the end of the month no that's not this january no that was last, that was january. last january oh <laughs> yeah. i'm like we're gonna go film that oh yeah Boston. that is a- and then i thought like in one of your emails you said you were going on tour and that's why i we was going in january yeah or maybe February or something. No. I'm going to Australia. Okay. I'm going to Costa like Rica. Or you're just going on vacation. Yeah. Oh, see, I thought you were like touring. No. I it was like a tour. Oh, wait, I, I did. I'm going emails. to. I don't remember. Oh, I think it was because I'm going to LA this weekend, and we were going to add on other dates, but then we didn't. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe. But whatever. Yeah. No. So I DJ mostly, but. Okay. We can go back to men. When I say touring, like, that's DJing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I was yeah, probably yeah. just confused. Yeah. And thought it was men. Right. Uh-huh. I mean, that makes sense. So, men was, like, started as, like, me, Joe, Emily, Ginger, and Michael. Mm-hmm. And we were, it was, like, a feminist dance band that was, like, crazy radical art band. Yeah. Collective. Then Joe got pregnant, and she was like, I'm not gonna go on tour yeah. I'm not gonna like be like all the Tigra about this and I was like okay <laughs> totally cool I get it then Emily who's my best friend mm. is a visual artist and she was like I'm not going on tour like and changing my whole life around I'm yeah. a visual artist so then it was me and Michael and Ginger for like a couple years or maybe even just a year. And then Ginger was like, I'm a visual artist, I can't go on tour. <laughs> and so me and Michael were like the core members of the band and then we had like other people coming in. Yeah. But like after a while I was just kinda like, this isn't what I want. This band, I loved it when it was like all of us and it was like this collective and then it, I didn't really want to have like a music industry band, you know? Yeah. So it just felt like it wasn't really my scene. So oh, okay. it started like becoming things I didn't really want, and then, uh, at, Wait, yeah. what do you mean by music industry then? Because didn't you self-release <clears throat> most of your stuff, and... We released our first record on I Am Sound, and then our second record we put out ourselves, but the process yeah. of putting it out ourselves kind of was, like, depressing in the sense that, like, you know... I don't know. The music industry really changed since yeah. 2007, so it was, like... That's when we started the project. 2011 was our first release. And then even since 2011, like, everything is just, like, turned upside down. Yeah. So, really, like, there's no deals anymore. There's no, like, you don't, like, make money when yeah. you put out a record. And, like, um, we did two small tours. And it just, like, felt like I didn't really, it wasn't my thing anymore. You know, it oh, felt okay. more like a, a band instead of, like, artists making something really creative. Do you know what I mean? Okay, yeah, and so you're you're not interested in being in a band. This is why, yeah, like, yeah. You're, you're just very different yeah. from yeah. everybody else. Well, I find else that, that like, when I'm about to go on tour and, like, I always do, like, different visual things. Yeah. For each show, like making costumes for everyone and making backdrops and stuff. That's a lot for every Yeah, every but show I you. enjoy that yeah. the most. Oh, okay. And I enjoy, I no matter what, like, it's like, I don't have to do that. I think, you know, my bandmates are always like, you don't have to stay up all night for, like, three nights building this crazy thing that, like, yeah. 
it's like no one actually cares about that and I'm like but that's what I want to do so it's like uh, yeah I mean I'm definitely like that's why I would say like I'm an artist first or yeah but yeah I mean so within all of this I also like write music for other people mm-hmm. and I think that's been like a really interesting aspect of my career recently is like you have a publishing deal with Universal okay. yeah so yeah Christina Aguilera huh yeah I did not know that and now I have to listen to Bionic because it's on Bionic isn't it yeah and I was like what Peaches is on a track with Christina Aguilera well we we wrote the track and we were like we want Peaches to do a rap and so she did I, I don't know yeah. what <laughs> yeah it's it's like funny yeah it's funny um but yeah so like I I I guess part of what happened was like me trying to write pop songs for other people like kind of like trickled into my own practice okay. of writing and it was like hard to distinguish the difference between what was for me and what was like for pop stars oh, okay. and so I feel like that has been an interesting development of myself as like a musician um and at the same time like basically DJing being like being the thing that makes me money mm-hmm. has made me like way more into the dance world and less into like major label pop music stuff oh, okay. um and yeah, so now I, I feel like I'm just, like, straddling a lot of, like, boundaries of the music industry. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I feel really embarrassed that I didn't know that men broke up. Mm. You guys need to start announcing things. Because as I, I get older, I get, I I'm, like, less in the loop. I yeah. Mean, I really, I'm, like, Google. Like, yeah. Is this band still around? I know. Well, it was <laughs> funny because my manager was like, I think we should just change the men Facebook to be J.D. Sampson. I was wondering about the name change, too. Yeah, that my bandmate, Michael, was like, I think we'd have so much more hits if we were called J.D. Sampson and Men. And I was like, and I was like, I really don't want to do that. It's really embarrassing for me. But, like, I, it was like he kept saying it. And so, finally, I was just like, if you want to do it, like, you do it. Yeah. And he did. And then, like, two months later, he was like, I wish I wouldn't have done that. And I was like, I told you. And did so, you get more Facebook hits? Honestly, I feel like we had Facebook hits because we were called men. Because it was funny yeah. for people to be like, so-and-so likes men. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that band was always like a Googling disaster. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple... Well, there's men, the men. Men, the men. The men. Yeah, they, we had a... We like... Oh, we have had problems with them. Yeah. Oh, you have? <laughs> well, like, a lot of our fans would show up to their shows and they were like... Uh. Ha- like we ha- we got involved a couple times because it yeah. was like messed up stuff. You guys throw down. What do you mean? Oh Why? no, <laughs> I wrote them like an email that was like some of their fans came to one of our shows, oh, and it was like a all ages show. So there was all these like young girls there, and yeah. these two guys were like super wasted and trying to like oh. hit on these girls, and they like were physical with them, and I freaked out, and I like kicked them out of the show and then I wrote to the band the men and I was like this is personal now like you know you you guys have been really awesome but like your fans suck and like um please like put an image of the band and in like parentheses write like something about you that makes you think it's not us makes your fans think it's not um I don't know. Well, I guess it doesn't matter now. Yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> in the end, it was like, that happened right before we broke up. So yeah. it's like, whatever. But yeah. Okay. Um, oh, my God. Now I just got really lost. This happens. No, I don't care. It's doing well, but I got totally yeah, lost. Um, oh, man, we did men. We did it Wait, all. Did you, read, did you read that Who Am I Feel So Free is my favorite music video of all time? No, but it is the best. Dallas Lighthouse. It is you the best. You think it's the best video. too? I was just telling them about it in the car too. It's like, like it's a lighthouse boner. Yeah. That shoots glitter and then yeah. she passes out from <laughs> exhaustion. Exactly. I love the, like I love the videos when. Oh, did you do your own videos? Um. So. No, but like I did basically like 
co-direct them all. Do you know okay. what I mean? Like, yeah. we got treatments, and then I would be like, no to this, yes to this. You know what I mean? And then um, on set, like, I'm really involved. Okay. Like, I'm, like, there for every second. Like, but on that one, it was like... I love it because nothing happens. Yeah. For, yeah. That's Which was, kind of when I asked for treatments on that one, I was like, I really want something that's like one shot yeah. and then something happens at the end. And so that was what they came up with. So. <laughs> but I was like always really into really like abrasively long mm. shots and stuff um, when I was in shot. film school. <laughs> so it was like, um, yeah, so I was like really wanted to kind of yeah. like do that. Um. Oh, yeah, so Pussy Riot. Yeah. You wrote a song about Pussy Riot. Yes. Then saw the Instagram <clears throat> picture. Yeah. They were here, right? Right, they you. were right here. Yeah, Pussy Riot was here. Yeah. Well, so... Um, yeah, what are you guys doing? Well, that... Well, I started... I did a event the night before their sentencing that was kind of like to bring attention to the sentencing yeah. and the... Just like... There wasn't that much media representation of the whole situation. So I wanted to like have an event, which was a reading of all of their texts that they had written, lyrics to their songs, like all, all this really incredible stuff. Mm -hmm. um, they're so smart. Uh, yeah. And I had like a bunch of famous women read their words. And it was like super highly attended, like really great experience. Um, and through that event, there was like this team kind of like grew that was like a PR, me, this guy Hunter who works for the voice project. That's like a, um, he's like a political kind of like, I don't know how you would say, maybe like analyst or something. Yeah. And so we all kind of started being like their weird New York team and oh, okay. we started like helping them figure out a lot of things and like they would ask us questions like well we want to do this event and like kind of just connecting them with the right people mm -hmm. so that's kind of how it started um as soon as they got out of prison they like came here and it was like immediately that was like the team oh, wow. so i've been working with them on not just music but just like general life yeah. Oh, I've been working with them on life. Like your pussy rights life. No, no, no. I'm like I'm like their New York friend. Yeah. You know, and then um, they had to make a song for something, and they were like, "We don't write music," so they asked me to do it, and I invited Johanna to help. Um, and then they want to make a record now. Oh, okay. So they're working with a lot of different people. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Collaboration. Yeah, it's really it's... great. I mean, it makes so much sense. Yeah. It's like, but we keep just like writing Latibra songs. Oh, do you? <laughs> like, basically. Like, oh, yeah, you and Johanna. Yeah. So... yeah, we're like writing FYR like over and over yeah. again. But well, maybe that's life. it'll, I don't know, maybe you can trick everyone because like it's different. Yeah, yeah. Or something. <laughs> we're trying, we're trying. <laughs> it's like, it's not wrong, song. I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People do it all yeah, the time. Yeah, I know. Join... Yeah, join the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about personal things? Sure. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I saw the article yeah. you and your girlfriend were interviewed about each other. Yeah. Um, but I guess, well, actually, I guess I should have brought this up first. Um, have you... Have you ever, I mean, with like the lifestyle that you have, mm -hmm. is it hard to maintain a relationship? Are you like a relationship oriented person? Have you ever wanted to get married, have kids or? I am a relationship oriented person, but my lifestyle has really been a struggle for my relationships. Mm -hmm. um, I think like not, it was until this relationship that I, hadn't made the choice of the relationship over my lifestyle right. and so i think right now i'm definitely like that's part of the reason why i feel like men stopped because it was like do you want to go on tour for four weeks and make one hundred dollars or do you want to <laughs> stay home and go away for a couple weekends and make like five hundred dollars whatever mm -hmm. um and 
I was like, well, gosh, I guess I'd rather make $500 and stay around my house. So that is, has been happening for a couple of years and I feel really great about it. So yeah, I mean, I, I am engaged right now. Oh, you're getting all this I know, this is all new information. Men is broken up, you're yep. engaged. Yep. Congratulations. Thanks, thanks. How long have you guys been together? Four years. Oh, four years? Yeah. And this is, is this like your first real no. long relationship or no? Oh, so you still tried even when you were... Yeah, most of my relationships were like three years. <laughs> and Serial monogamous. Yeah, but then I definitely <laughs> like feel like my neighbors fight all the time. Um, I, I didn't hear it in real life. I heard it in Yeah, the yeah. Headphones. It's really weird. Like, so the, they're like older and then one they just got this roommate who's like yeah. also older like oh. this woman and the two women just like hate each other like oh. one of them doesn't even have a key so she just like sits in the hallway while oh. the, until the other one will let her back in it's like really weird opposite of golden girls oh it's really actually it makes me really stressed out because yeah. i'm like i feel so bad for her sitting oh. in the hallway and i'm like anyways um <laughs> Oh, yeah. Like, I feel like they... But I feel like I was out of town for, like, 80% of my other relationships. Yeah. And this one is not like that. So it's, like, really, really different. It's, like... I mean, whatever. It's, it's like, everything. You make a decision to feel positive about something. Mm -hmm. And then generally it goes well. Okay. Um, have you run... Like, all right. That's it. Have you... Uh, I mean, what has your experience in relationships been like as a, I'm going to do the gender outlaw thing again, um, because that was, I think that was in the New York <laughs> Times or something, so it's quotable. Yeah, yeah, right. Gender outlaw. Quotable. Um, fine. Great. Yeah, just. No problems yeah. there. Yeah. Is your girlfriend now in a, in a band or was she in a band? She was in a band. Can you guys tour together? We something? played a couple of shows together. Okay. Um, She's no longer in a band? No. Okay. So both, like, domestic? Well, you know, like I said, like, well, I don't know. I guess it's, like, it's really hard to make money in a band. Yeah. And I think, like, um, once you're, like, not making money and totally broke because yeah. of your band and, like, losing work because you're leaving all the time because you're in a band, mm -hmm. then you're kind of, you have to, like, rethink your whole life. Yeah. And I think that happens to a lot of people who are, like, in their 30s. Oh, yeah. Well, now that you just said, in yeah. ripe old age of 36, mm. um, do you have any... <laughs> I asked this at the end. This is, like, my Oprah Barbara Walters question. Yeah, nice. Do you have anything really spiritual, any, like, words of wisdom? Um, like, just, I mean... Or I find mm. you just have a, I have a totally different perspective now than mm -hmm. when I did when I was yeah. twenty something. So, you know, and that can relate to personal life or your professional life. I don't care what. Yeah, for I other just, women in music or just people in general. Well, I mean, see now I feel bad that I said woman in me because you said that you oh. don't really. Oh no. Okay. No. Yeah, I mean, it's it. I'm just saying like. I feel like the music industry saw me more as yeah. like a weirdly gendered person rather than a woman. Yeah, well, I'd like to hear your per perspective. I guess as yeah, however yeah. you identify okay. as yeah, a yeah. non-hetero. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think like the for me the thing that I wish I had done is actually more about bi business, and um, I wish I had like known more about money mm -hmm. and business in terms of like making sure I didn't end up without money or a job yeah. um and that I would have like experimented with other uh, occupations or careers throughout my being in a band also and like kind of okay. like cultivated those kind of relationships and stuff so that I wasn't like just left to like be a musician for the rest of my life. You feel um, like you're stuck being a musician for the rest of your life? 
Yeah. You do? I mean, you have so many other I feel now. like I'm stuck, like, being famous or something. Or, like, semi-famous. Yeah, I mean, semi -famous. Yeah. Because I really wish I could be, like, I'm starting this new business where I turn tables into trees or something. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> and then, and it's, like, I, it's not like J.D. Sampson has this thing or like whatever, you, you know. You want to be anonymous or do something anonymously? I just wish I was like also a doctor or like yeah. something like that. You know, like I wish that I had another interest that didn't involve like show business or like entertainment or mm -hmm. like whatever. Because I find that like nowadays like I like promote parties and I... DJ and I, yeah. you know, it's all kind of within this same like industry of like nightlife entertainment, and um, sometimes I don't feel like doing that. It's weird too because you see, you come across as kind of an introverted person. Yeah, yeah. But like that's your yeah. line of work is yeah, yeah like introducing. Which is what I was saying earlier about fame, and yeah. what I was saying earlier about like. Um, creating a character that I, like, eventually, like, had to live up to, even though that's not really who I am. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are you, <laughs> is it, does it make you mad that, you did mention how different the music industry is now, and that you can't just make money off, like, CDs or records, yeah, yeah. or it just doesn't work that way anymore? Mm -hmm. Like, when I was sitting with Mary, I'm like, so how'd you get signed to whatever, I don't know, yeah. like, Discord or Matador yeah, or something? Yeah. Like, we sent them a tape. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I remember that, like, sending sending record labels cassette tapes. But, yeah. I mean, now music seems more accessible. And, like, the stuff that you do, I can go on YouTube and find, like, every video yeah. that you've ever made and listen to every song you've ever recorded. But that doesn't mean that you make money because I'm listening to right. your stuff. Right. And you said that you feel like you're stuck being a musician forever now. Does it make you mad or resentful that you feel like you're trapped in this occupation that does not compensate you for your work? It makes me mad. <laughs> I feel um, lucky that I was like in at my peak of, of success in the industry when we still made money. Yeah. So I feel like um, in that sense, I'm luckier than most. I also think that right now the industry is completely like hype based. Mm -hmm. So it's like someone's famous for like six months and that's it and they don't even like get a chance for another record or whatever yeah. so in that sense i feel lucky as well but i also have a label right now called right. atlas chair um and which is which is all those boxes over there and a lot of my crap oh. but um basically that is has been really interesting because i'm starting a business where i know i'm not going to make money mm -hmm. but i really feel like I still, like, have this desire to, like, push people's work that I think should be out there and people should hear or whatever. But, yeah. I mean, for the most part, we don't make physical releases. Like, we make yeah. websites or, yeah. and, like, no, we have, like, relationships with iTunes and we, like, oh, okay. um, you know, have to time out, like, when something is free and when it's not free. And it's all about, like statistics it's, that's where math comes in so you're good at math see? Yeah. <laughs> not me just like but I'm not very I'm, yeah I'm trying to get better at accounting yeah yeah um, and this will be probably my last and I ask it just because I'm because you this. this is my last chance to cry yeah, I haven't. Well, it looks like your eyes are kind of moist, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Maybe you're just really tired and you're sick of these lights shining in your face. Like, no. <laughs> like, here we. No. Um, Actually, I fake cried last night. Well, I was trying to pretend to that it, I was crying. So. <laughs> and that, so it was so like, cool. I, like, actually teared. Did you just keep your eyes. No, I, was, I just, like, was like. <laughs> I don't know. I used to think. I used to make myself do that, but I would think of, like, really fucked up. <gasps> Sad I would things. think about like my whole. Well, actually, you might not. Want no, to speak don't to me. say that. Don't, all right, I won't tell you. I was young, so yeah, I was yeah, really right, messed right. up, like child. No, but it was for I wanted to be an actress or something. So oh I yeah, this. yeah. It was for a purpose. Oh, that's good. And then I feel really guilty that I was thinking about like my family being murdered. Oh, <laughs> no. 
I know, man. Ugh, Gemini. But, um, well, so the reason that I'm doing this yeah. was that, you know, big music fan, like, I've played music all my life, so I'm basically interviewing people that, <laughs> like, you told me, I'm like, people that I love and mm-hmm. that I don't think are represented accordingly. And, like, the... It was for lack of a better term that this is like women of rock music. It was yeah, just yeah. to like distinguish yeah, it. Yeah. You know, it'll be called something different. No, later, no. But I think it's that's kind of great. embarrassing. Like, no, it's not. It. Okay. But, I so have some books about now. that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do but I, I don't know. Like, how do you feel about the about the representation of? It doesn't even have to be rock music, but of women in music. I can think of. I remember being at a party with Dylan. Yeah. One night, and there was that Rolling Stone book of like. I think it was called Women of Rock. Yeah. And then yeah. he recorded an album and called it Women of Rock. Like, just That's awesome. It. But, like, his mom was in it. So, and, you know, it's like Patti Smith. Um, who else? You know, Debbie Harry. Not that I don't like them. Like, but there are so many others. And I feel like we kind of, not we, mm-hmm. but they're kind of just these token women that are supposed to represent all of these other women who make music. Well, no, it's really long-winded. No. I mean, it's interesting. It's like I was thinking two different things as you were explaining that. One was like, hopefully we never have to get to a place where women in rock are different than men in rock. Yeah. So part of me just tries to, like, pretend like everything is fine. Mm-hmm. But then the other thing is that, like, those people made it, and they made it for whatever reason, but they fit into a certain mold. Yeah. Um, whether or not they were, like, considered punk or not, like, they still kind of, like, fit into the shape that existed that year or something yeah, like that. That's true. And I think people like La Tigra, Mary Timoney, like, I don't know who else, Lydia, like, whatever, like, we didn't fit into that shape of that mm-hmm. year. We might have fit into that shape 20 years later or 10 years later or 10 years before or whatever but it's just like we we didn't wake up in a bathtub full of benjamins (laughs) whereas like i think to some extent like patty smith has made a good amount of money um Mm -hmm. you know like i don't know how much or what she spent it on or i I don't care (laughs) but it's just like you know i i recognize that like i have a different career Mm -hmm. than her i would say she's probably more recognized (laughs) yeah (laughs) well i mean i'm thinking the same with debbie harry or whatever yeah yeah so yeah yeah i mean even kathleen is uh yeah. I love that quote that she had about walking down the street and she had just read an article about she was a cultural icon, but she was, like, starving to death. And, yeah. Like, eating ramen noodles, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there, there's, like, that person, like, the Kathleen Hen who still has to work, and then you have your kind of, you know, who's most, re- we're talking about Courtney Love on the way down. Yeah, She's yeah. just supposed to represent everyone I mean, who wrote music in the 90s yeah. or something, and, like, she makes money. That's a great example, though, is, like, she was very, working in a very similar Mm -hmm. style to, like, a lot of other people that we know, but, um, and was in that community, but, like, because of XYZ, she ended up, like, on MTV, and therefore, like, made a lot more money, and that rhymed. It did. Which, was it on purpose? No, but that was like a really good lyric for a song yeah. or something. Okay, you can send it to me later after you write it down. <laughs> Alright, um, yeah, I mean, is there anything else that you feel this is going to be archived forever and people are going to seek this out because they want to learn about you and know about you? Or do you want to I feel like I had. Never made a living. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like I'm super lucky, and I've had like a really awesome experience. And yeah. like being a gender outlaw, or like even a woman with a mustache, like yeah. with facial hair, like that. When does that happen? Like, I feel like I've been super lucky to be as like in fashion magazines and in music magazines and taken seriously for my music and art. 
and um, taken seriously as a human. And I feel like that's like, I, f I just feel lucky and grateful. You're not gonna cry, are you? No. Right, well, <laughs> thank you very Leave much. Leave it to the lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.